Today I want to talk about my refrigerator and how to keep the food from spoiling when the door is left open. It's very hard to tell whenever the door is just slightly open, which leaves the light on inside and it warms the food up inside, especially on the top shelf. So I added a little door sensor, a little Z-Wave door sensor that helps the home assistant to know when it's open. And I built a node red flow that alerts me when it's left open for more than three minutes and keeps alerting me until the door gets shut. So what we're going to do is go through and take a look at how I've got that all set up and show you what you can do with that as well. I'm going to assume that you've already added the, the door sensor to your Z-Wave uh, setup on your, or your Z-Wave network. And I've done that. You can see where I've added the fridge door node 26. So let's get over to the node red. So I'm going to create a new flow and I'm going to start with a trigger state and just drag that over here. And I'm going to call this fridge door open. So the trigger is when somebody opens the refrigerator door, it's going to start this whole process. And the entity ID for this is going to be a binary sensor. That's uh, the Ingersoll ran wave sensor and then I'm going to add a constraint and so this entity's current state is a string of on so what that means is that whenever it's true or allowed certain things are going to happen and whenever it's not true or blocked other things are going to happen so I'm going to add now a timer and you can filter these nodes by time uh, searching up here at the top. So this is a stop timer and I'm going to call this stop timer a two minute timer and set it for two minutes, two minute timer. And what's going to happen is if the doors open, we're going to, based on that constraint that we created, it's going to be allowed to proceed. And I'm just going to attach it there. And what it's going to start doing is it's going to start counting down uh, that two minute timer. Now, when they close the door, we want the timer to stop. So this is how I do that. I add a change node and that's down here conveniently located. I'll just drag it over here. So you get a state change. The door is closed which is not part of our constraint. It blocks the flow and we'll, we'll just throw this down here to that. And what I'll call this is just a stop. It stops the timer and the message payload we need to send to the timer is stop. So make that a string called stop. And when I do that, what will happen is, uh, whenever the door is closed, the timer will stop and that will stop anything downstream of the flow. So the next thing I want is I want a, <clears throat> I want a current state node. So we're going to be looking at the current state of the refrigerator door. And that is right here. And we'll throw that over here. So we're going to, um, on our door status, we're going to check our door status. So we need to set that up first. And that I call fridge door status. And it's still that same binary sensor. And I only have one of these door sensors, so it's easy to find it. It's an Ingersoll RAN Z-Wave sensor. So if it is off, the state is off, I'm going to do some things with it. So let's go ahead and close that out. So that's a fridge door status. And so if this timer expires, it's going to come over here. It's going to send the payload to the fridge door status. If the state is false, meaning the door is still open, it's going to trigger a bunch of things that I do here. It, and it also at the same time will restart the timer for two minutes. And basically this is how I get let me just drag these around a little bit. This is how I get this loop going that it will continue to alert me every two minutes until the state changes here and stops the timer. 
So now I need to create a few things here to be able to send a notification. So what I do is I create a, a function node, which happens to be conveniently right here. I'll drag this over here. And with this function node, I'm going to write a little bit of JSON as a message payload. I'm going to call it notify fridge open. And the message is actually going to be, um, and you have to get the, the JSON correct or it will not work. You'll have error. So message equals payload is going to be fridge door open. Open. There you go. The topic is going to be fridge door open. I just keep it simple. They're both the same. And then the priority, and I'm sending this to pushover, right? So I'm going to send it over to pushover. And the priority in pushover determines what it does. So if the fridge door is open, it will override my do not disturb on my devices and tell me that the door is open. So it bypasses the do not disturb. All right, so let's verify messages, payload, fridge door open with commas. Topic is fridge door open with comma. Priority is zero. And sound, I'm just using sound game land. That's just one of the built-in sounds for uh, the pushover. I'll say that's done. And now you'll see I have a, basically a message payload that I can send over to pushover. And with pushover, I will add a pushover API node. And I'm going to search for that. You can choose whatever your, uh, your, your favorite alerting mechanism mechanism is. I happen to have used pushover for a lot of years. And so I just like using that. So this is su super simple. Um, I don't do anything with it other than just put it here and then I tie it together. I don't have to add anything. You can name it if you wanted, whatever you want to do, it's just pushover. All right. So, um, anytime that this state is false, it's going to trigger an alert. It's going to create this payload and this payload is now going to go over to the pushover API and send me an alert on my devices. Also at the same time, it's going to kick that timer again. And then we're just going to go through this loop over and over again until, until the door is closed. And when the door closes, it stops the timer and nothing else happens until the state changes again. And that's what this is doing right here. This is a trigger. It, anytime something changes within this, this entity, it will trigger this flow to start. What, what other thing I do, which is kind of cool for me is I've created a call. I've used a call service node, which is, um, another home assistant node. And I actually have a number of these. I, I use this for my Alexa stuff in the house. So I'll name this one kitchen fridge open. And it's going to be the domain. It's going to be a notify domain. And the entity ID, the service actually is going to be Alexa media. I specify which device I want this to go to. So I want it to go to the kitchen echo. So if I'm in the kitchen and the door's left open, it will tell me that the door's left open. And then we have yet another opportunity to write some JSON. And for simplicity, I'm just going to copy this from uh, one I already have created. So same, same concept. We have a message block, a data block, and then a target. So the message is fridge door open exclamation point. The data type is an announcement and the target is this device right here. The, the kitchen echo We're done with that. So now you'll see this comes down in here and the output location is going to be the message payload. And that's all you need to do for that. Uh, the same, same uh, notification stream is this, uh, pushover API call will be this one. So that's really all there is to it. And that's what I really love about node red is now what happens is I can visually see what's going on here. So, uh, I'll just walk you through it again. So we have a, a trigger and if it, the trigger is either refrigerator door open or refrigerator door closed, and this trigger is going to 
start this timer if a door is open. That timer is going to run for two minutes. It's going to come down here and check the status, the door state. If the door is still open, it's going to send a notification to my pushover API. And it's also going to send a notification to my um, device in the kitchen to tell me it's open audibly. And then it's going to start that timer over again. And it's just going to keep looping through that every two minutes. Once the door is closed, this flow happens and then a stop is issued to the timer and the timer doesn't do anything else. And then we just sit and wait until the fridge door is open again and the whole thing happens. Now, when you're all done, you want to run a deploy like so. And now you'll see that this thing is connected. This uh, trigger is connected and waiting for input. I can force this. So what I'm going to do, since it's late, I'm going to not make it talk. And we're going to try to, to test this. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll go to a inject node. So I'll just search for inject. And you can do this with, with most of your flows. All this is going to do is it's going to start the flow. So I'm just going to attach it to the timer, start, um, deploy it. And then I just push this button here and now the timer is running. And whenever this gets down from two minutes, it will send out a notification. Now you can see what happened here uh, because I don't actually have the fridge door open right now is that this timer expired and this says now off. It just stopped the whole process. The timer expired and, and um, the door is closed. So it didn't send me any alerts. Had the door still been open when this timer expired, it would have sent a notification. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Also, I'm going to remove this, um, this inject node just because I don't need it for anything anymore. So that's how I keep from getting spoiled food. Whenever we forget to close the door or the door gets mostly shut, and we don't know that it isn't all the way shut and the light on, lights on inside and, and it's not sealed completely. Let me know if you have any comments down below and make sure if you like the video, you give it a thumbs up and you subscribe and you tell all your friends and we'll do another one soon. See ya.